Okay, next we want to look at infrared spectroscopy. Now, infrared spectroscopy, it starts at a wavelength of um, approximately 10 to the power of negative 6 meters to about 10 to the power of negative 3 meters. Okay, that's the wavelength of light that we are using here. So basically what we're doing is we are passing energy which is um, in the frequencies of this, all right, with zero... Uh, 0 0.0000001 meter to, to 0 0.001 meter okay so the energy that we're passing through the sample is in this region again to make things simple we usually have a radiation source okay let's say we have a radiation source here oops all right and this radiation source will be producing the wavelengths uh, so let's say like for example from 10 to the power of negative 6 all the way to 10 to the power of negative 3 and then we may have a monochromator okay a monochromator will select the uh, wavelength and then we have our sample all right and then we have a detector but in this method right in this method what we're going to be doing is we are going to be passing all of the wavelengths that means we're going to be passing everything from 10 to the power of negative 6 all the way to 10 to the power of negative 3 all of it we're going to pass all of it through one by one okay so maybe starting from uh, 10 to the power of negative 6 pass all the wavelengths into the sample okay so what is going to happen is what is going to happen is now this method is primarily used to study chemical bonds okay it's primarily used to study chemical bonds so what will happen is when when the chemical bonds absorb when the chemical bonds absorb the energy in the infrared region what happens is they can have bond stretching meaning it, like they can bounce back and forth okay they can bounce back and forth it's like a spring okay like a spring they can bounce back and forth or they can bend all right so so originally let's say they were straight okay originally they were straight then they can bend so they can bend both downwards right that's one or what they can do is uh, they can bend in such a way that one bends downwards the other one bends upwards okay so that's also possible so but whatever it is there is stretching like a spring like a spring and then bending okay so what happens is in this method what we can do is roughly um let's let's say for example let's say we have uh, ethanol right we have ethanol now, when you look at ethanol here, when you look at the structure of ethanol, I want you to notice there are four different types of bonds present. One is the bond between carbon and hydrogen, okay, carbon and hydrogen. Then the other bond is between carbon and carbon, and the other bond is between carbon and oxygen, and the other bond is between oxygen and hydrogen. So these are all the four different types of bonds which are present. Each bond is different. I mean, they're same, they're all covalent, but they're connected to different atoms, right? Carbon, hydrogen, carbon, 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 oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, okay? So what can happen is when we pass a certain wavelength of light through the sample, okay, when we pass certain wavelength of light through the sample, maybe only the hydrogens will, will vibrate, okay? So that means they go back and forth. Only the hydrogens which are directly bonded to carbon will go back and forth that means they will vibrate nobody else okay okay so let's say we use one particular wavelength let's say we use a wavelength um, um let's say 0 0.0004 something like that let's say that only the, those will vibrate all right then then what we do is uh, let's say if we decide to change the wavelength we decide to change the wavelength and then you notice only the carbons start to vibrate either they vibrate back and forth like a spring or they vibrate up and down okay up and down um, from each other so when you change the free wavelength or the frequency again what will happen is you notice eh, it's only these two that starts vibrating back and forth everybody else is just quiet but these two start vibrating back and forth back and forth back and forth and then finally when you change the wavelength again you may notice that the hydrogen and the oxygen hydrogen and the oxygen start vibrating all right either back and forth or up and down so by manipulating the by manipulating the wavelengths we can determine 
we can kind of figure out what are the types of bonds which are present in a compound okay what are the bonds what are the kind of bonds which are present in a compound so that's what ir spectroscopy is ir spectroscopy is primarily used to study bonds especially functional groups okay especially functional groups so uh, it's not here so okay so so in ir spectroscopy all right in ir spectroscopy the y the x-axis right the x-axis will have this the x-axis this is the table this is called wave number now wave number is actually the same as frequency okay wave number is actually the same as frequency it's just that they use the word wave number all right so in the y-axis is more of frequencies okay instead of using wave wavelength they use frequencies on the uh, x-axis then this table this table will be given to you during the exam okay it will be given to you during the exam so all of the frequencies at which certain bonds absorb is given to you here like for example if there's a bond between carbon and chlorine it will be absorbing somewhere around the region of 600 to 800 frequent the frequency of 600 to 800 all right this is where it will be absorbing uh, if it's a carbon and oxygen bond like just now right just now the carbon and oxygen in in this okay if it's something like this then it'll be absorbing somewhere in the 1050 to 1400 this is where it will be absorbing all right so that's that's kind of what it tells us all right so all of this will be given to you and so your job is not to memorize it but to know where to come and look for it it will be given to you during the assessment so how does this method work so let's say this this was the the graph right let's say this is the graph the graph always starts at the top here all right so at the top here would be 100 percent, or sometimes it's just written as one okay it, you might see 100 percent, or you might see it has one so what happens is all of these frequencies are passed through the sample the ones at the bottom here all of these frequencies are passed through the sample all right so what happens is so if something is not absorbing it'll just go on straight like that the moment there is an absorption then suddenly you see the graph going down and back up again then you might have things like this uh, so this means there is absorption going on something like that so the graph is right from the top to the bottom this is this is transmittance right trans mittens mittens okay how much a light goes through so whenever you see a drop like this whenever you see a drop like this right it basically means something is absorbing but when you see a flat line like this it basically means nothing is absorbing that means that means let's say for example in my drawing here somewhere in this region okay there is no absorption nothing is absorbing that means 2700 to about 2200 nothing is absorbing there's nothing in the molecule that is absorbing okay so if we look at this uh, here we look at ethanol we look at ethanol here this is a sample of ethanol all right so this is what i meant so right at the top here is 100 percent transmittance that means transmittance here right that means this part here nothing much is absorbing okay nothing much is absorbing i mean it is but not much of it is being absorbed okay so what i wanted to notice is these dips okay this dips over here this this means that something is absorbing all right this dips and another thing i want to tell you is um a region which is somewhere here this especially this region here 1000 1001 about 1003 1004 this entire region here anything this part here is called the fingerprint region finger print region now the fingerprint region is a region where which can be used can be used to identify uh, the type of compound it is okay the type of compound it is as far as we are concerned in our syllabus we don't need to know anything in this region this this part we can ignore okay we can ignore this part all right we can ignore this part we don't need to know this but it's called the fingerprint region which can be used to identify compounds it's not very accurate but it can be used and all of this part is done by computers done by computers all right so back to this again now so let's remove this 
Now, for alcohols, right, whenever you have alcohols, there would always be a, a, a peak like this or a, a maybe a broader peak, something like this. In this region, above 3,000, above 3,000, there will be a peak, okay? So the peak can look, sorry, the peak can look like this, what you're seeing on my on the screen now, something like this. Or sometimes it's it just comes down a little bit more broader and then it goes back up, okay? It could be broad. So this peak, uh, if you look at the table again, alcohols right let's look at alcohols here now there you see in the region of 3200 to 3600 3200 to 3600 so this is 3000 3001 3002 that means starting from here to about somewhere two three four so in this region here somewhere you will see a peak or you will see a signal okay you see a signal so i call this sometimes a signal in that region okay and this signal here, this signal in the region of 2,900 in this, in the plus minus here, this is because of this, okay? Since most hydrocarbons always, since most hydrocarbons always contain a carbon hydrogen bond, this, this area, this peak here, or this signal here is always present, always present in most organic compounds because they contain carbon hydrogen bonds okay so you cannot run away from it so there is carbon hydrogen bond okay then let's look at propanone uh this is not propane eh? this is propanone acetone acetone looks like this this is acetone okay so it has a functional group this functional group this functional group here this is called carbonyl 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 is a double bond okay so you look at this picture here what you will notice is all right what you will notice is very important this is very important identification for carbonyl groups you will see a very very sharp bend coming from right to the top and often it touches the floor here and it goes back up often it touches the floor and goes back up okay sometimes you may not touch the floor but it can go very deep down this looks like a sword it goes down and back up again so this if you see this in this region here this region is about 1680 to about 1780 roughly around that okay roughly around that region if you see something like this 100 percent it is a carbon input okay 100 percent. so this part all this part here we can ignore okay we don't need to know this and then again here and this did this, this would be the ch okay ch yeah, you might see a peak over here, okay, but this peak is not very significant, not very significant for it to be an OH, okay, not very significant for it to be OH. So we, but again, we can get confused, right? When we see something like this, we can get confused that maybe, uh, maybe it is uh, an OH, okay, but it's not, all right? It's not so significant, all right? Okay, now we look at the next picture, ethanoic acid. Uh, now, for ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid has two functional groups. Ethanoic acid has two functional, I mean, sorry, it has one functional group. It has this. But within this functional group, there are two groups here. This group is called carbonyl. And this group is called hydroxyl. Okay, hydroxyl so together they are called carboxyl carboxyl okay so this is called a car this entire thing is called carboxyl group right but individually individually they're called carbonyl and hydroxyl so when you have a carbonyl and hydroxyl what you will notice is you will see a very sharp sword coming down here in this region 1700 to about 1800 in that region that means the carbonyl and then you will see a broad peak. You see a broad peak about 3,000 something. This is an indicative part for OH. Okay, for OH. So if both of these are present, this is present and this is present, then it is a carboxylic acid. Okay, it's a carboxylic acid. But if it's only this is present, the other one is kind of absent, then it is a carbonyl. It's a carbonyl. So most likely it's a, it's a ketone or an aldehyde. Because ketone and aldehydes, okay, ketones will be something like this, right? 
they are flanked by two carbons. Aldehydes is like this. It looks like an a carboxylic acid, but it's not, all right? It's flanked by one carbon. Okay, so our objective, right? Our objective in this part, in this for when we're, we're talking about IR spectroscopy, our objective is very simple. We need to be able to distinguish between an alcohol versus a carboxylic acid versus uh, an aldehyde and, and ketone. Okay, so if, if a spectrum is given to us, we should be able to identify whether it is a, an alcohol or it's a carboxylic acid, or it's an LDI. That's it. That's all we need to do. All right. So it's pretty simple. So every time we just need to come back and refer to this table. So let's say, for example, if I ask you a random question, I said, how would you be able to distinguish something that contains a carbon double bond or not? Okay. If you look over here, how do you distinguish between something that has a carbon double bond or it does not? So all you have to say is if carbon double bonds are present, a signal okay, should appear between 1620 to 1680. So basically what you're trying to say is, uh, if you look at the signal, okay, if you see a signal and the signal is in this region, okay, let's say uh, 1620 to 1680, uh, if there's a signal there, that means this is most likely a double bond. That's it. That's all you got to say. Okay, it's easy. So you just refer to the table and you make a conclusion. All right, refer to the table and make conclusion. So this was the other one just now, remember? All of them have, whenever you have a carbon-hydrogen bond, it's always in this region, always in this region, okay? So that would be IR spectroscopy. And then we will continue with uh, something else.